Welcome to Yes Catholic, the place where real people share their real stories and realize it is all God's grace on the move. I'm your host, David Patterson, and every week we hear a new guest share their story of how they came to give their yes to Jesus and his church. So let's get started. I feel excited to welcome Thomas Hammond. Welcome, buddy. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your story. Great to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely, man. So for those who don't know you, why don't you share a little bit about yourself before we dive into the rapid fire? Totally. Yes. And uh, a little bit before this, we had some technical difficulties. So, you know, you know, this is about to be an amazing conversation. Uh, Amen to that, man. About to do something. That's uh, right. So, what's up, everyone? My name's Thomas Hammond. A uh, little bit about me. I'm 27 years old. This is my first year um, in the seminary, which has been a huge gift. Um, it really means a lot that you're tuning in. And yeah, my, my real hope is that this conversation would be a blessing to you. And my hope is to connect with some of you. So if you find this interesting or just have further questions, you can go ahead and reach out or DM me. But a little bit about me, born in Tallahassee, Florida, grew up in Winter Haven, Florida, which is just south of Orlando. And right now I'm in Boynton Beach, Florida at St. Vincent de Paul Seminary. So it's like just north of Miami. And uh, a little bit about Florida. I love Florida. It's amazing. I love yeah. the heat and the beaches. And I just want to say that uh, Florida man is uh, definitely real. <laughs> Sometimes I can be Florida man, but it's awesome. Like just beautiful diversity of so many sweet people here. But then the last thing would be uh, beyond that, I went to Florida State University, go Knowles. I was an SBO missionary for four years. And I'm really passionate about building my own personal prayer life and also inspiring others and giving them tools on how to have the amazing relationship with Jesus that um, he wants for you. So thanks again. for Yeah, and I'm on. really looking forward to you dive deeper into mental prayer and just how that's yes. really impacted you as well. But let's get to know you a little bit more, man, with the rapid fire ready to tackle some of these questions. Okay, let's do it. All right. Describe yourself as a kid in three words. Oh, man. My parents would love this one. I would say the first is got to be curious. I feel like I was always asking why. Um, second would be hyper. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was all over the place. On the go. And uh, the third would be Legos. Um, <laughs> I just kind of grew up with Legos and Bionicles. If did you, you, know, you did know. you keep the Legos like built and on display or were they always like broken down eventually? There was there was definitely like a wall of fame in my room of like my creations. Okay. And you you gotta have a pile ready to go, you know, sure. to make new. So yeah. Because sure. yeah. my my kids currently have this massive bucket of hundreds of dollars oh. worth of Lego, but it's it is what it is. Dude, they've gotten so expensive, it's crazy. Anyway, it's so, insane. Yeah. Are you are you a morning person or a night owl? I'm definitely a morning person. When I was growing up, my dad, shout out to my dad, um, he would get up at like 4.30 every morning. Yeah. And I remember when I was younger, I was like, why would you ever do that ever? <laughs> <laughs> but but now that I'm older, um, just the joy of like getting up early, getting some good prayer in, getting after it, like the joy of knowing I'm firing all cylinders um, is, is really sweet. So morning yeah. person. I can relate to that for sure. Okay, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um, growing up, a hero of mine was uh, Zuko from Avatar: The Last Airbender. So <laughs> I just want to be a firebender. I would choose. That's what I choose. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, go yeah. to order at a coffee shop. <laughs> I'm typically just a black iced coffee, nothing too fancy. But yeah. I, I have to admit, man, if I'm like at the airport every once in a while, I'll get some like cinnamon bark, you know, just like something really sugary. No, depending no on the pepper, season. Pepper. Yeah, depending on the season, pumpkin okay. spice, you know, so that's what I'd say. No, that's fair. Okay. Uh, go to short prayer. Going about your day? I think throughout my day, a prayer that's always on my lips is just. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Mm, um, I said that at Mass today, man. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's like going to class, um, exercising, 
like whatever it is. It's kind of just mm-hmm. always having um, Jesus' name on my lips. Or if I'm ever in like a pinch or like a bind, sure. just Jesus, so they have a mercy on me. It's yeah. my good too. There's so. power in that for Jesus, right? And then you could have coffee with any saints. You got your iced coffee, you sit down, who's sitting across the table? My first answer is definitely St. Augustine. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like he would have some stories and just the the richness of his journey um, towards the Lord and then the eloquence of how he describes his conversion in the confessions mm-hmm. is just a really beautiful mixture of like the head and the heart yep. and just his writings have really helped me. So I would definitely enjoy a nice uh, sugary coffee with <laughs> <laughs> pumpkin spice latte iced yes. coffee whatever <laughs> all right last one if you could ask god one question what would it be wow um this is kind of deep but i think i would just ask him how do you see me mm-hmm. um because i've experienced in prayer him speaking his particular delight for me but um to hear the Lord say that would be really beautiful and powerful. So have you ever asked that question kneeling before our Lord in the tabernacle? Totally. I'd say um, that's kind of the strength of the day is going into those prayer times, receiving the approval affirmation of the father and then going out getting after the day. That's, that's it. That's the secret right there. So, yeah. Yeah. You meant to that. Well, you flew through the rapid fire. Let's begin with a prayer and then we'll get you to share your story. All right. Let's do it. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, teach us how to pray. Holy Father, I thank you so much for Thomas. And I thank you for his yes. And Lord, for the way that he has grown closer to you in prayer. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to decrease, that you would increase, Lord Jesus. Help everything that we discussed tonight just give you glory. And Lord, I pray for everyone tuning in and who will listen in the future. Lord, I pray that you would just open our hearts to receive what you want us to receive. We say yes to you, Lord. Help us to not be afraid of giving our yes, of opening wide the door of our heart to you. And we make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. St. Augustine, please pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, man. Let's dive right in. Where does your story begin? Yeah, super grateful to have the opportunity to share my story. Um, I'm 27 years old now, and I just can't believe it. I can't believe I'm here in the seminary. I can't believe just the joy um, that the Lord has given me and how radically different my life looks now and um yeah just to jump right into my story i guess i'd say sometimes it's easy to think that uh seminarians or priests like grow on trees you know (laughs) but like no i i grew up in like a totally normal family like in the united states like with disney channel and cheering for the nfl and all of it so i think that my story is um similar to many people. Just to to start off with um, my parents, I definitely would say that like the primary way that God has loved me or invested in me is through my mom and dad. Um, I have awesome, awesome mom and dad. They're high school sweethearts, which is a really cool story that I got to share sometime. But I have a younger brother, Anthony, um, who's two years younger than me. And then my amazing younger sister, Violet, who's 10 years younger than me, which has been um, an amazing gift. But yeah, so grew up in Florida. I'd say to run through it, um, I grew up feeling very close to God. I was raised in a Catholic family where we went to mass every Sunday. Um, My mom um, loves Jesus with all her heart and was really amazing at gathering us together to pray the rosary. And my dad is is so handy. We call him Mr. Fix-It. He can fix anything. And when my church home parish was being renovated, I remember like being a boy and being in the church as my dad's like 
working away on the inside. So I kind of describe like my boyhood as just like being safe, being a boy, having fun, uh, Boy Scouts, sports. But then I'd say going into middle school, and I think this is particularly appropriate. If you're a young person listening to this or you have children, middle school really changed everything for me. I'm, I mean, I'm sure I don't know if anyone has had like a smooth middle school experience. But um, I think middle school was when the question emerged, um, who am I and am I lovable? Am I enough? And do people like me? And on top of that, man, the world just um, comes out of nowhere. So the introduction um, of pornography, um, going into high school, the allure of alcohol or drugs or dating relationships. Um, yeah, I definitely felt this, oh my goodness, I, I'm, I'm no longer in this safe boyhood stage. Um, I feel, oh man, I'm, I've really let God down. And that was the introduction of this shame, I'd say, where it was no longer feeling very close to God, but in middle school and high school, oh, I'm I'm not as good as I thought I was. I've really let God down. And so maybe he's just over there somewhere. And that kind of really started this uh kind of fake it till I make it mentality. If I'm if I'm doing well in school, if um I have a girlfriend, if I'm successful, uh, then I'm good. That answers the question if I'm lovable, if I'm enough which uh, sends me to Florida State University, which amazing, go Knowles. I don't know if you're a college football fan or whatnot. But I'm up here in Canada, so it's a little different. But Oh, a little, <laughs> yeah, slightly different. Well, yeah. here in Florida, it's definitely major, but um, yeah. not going to talk about the Georgia game. But anyways, um, so, so get to uh, college, which um, we know college is a huge battlegrounds for um, the souls of young people. Um, the statistics are crazy, 80 to 90 percent um, leaving the faith in their college years. And um, yeah, I went into that year still looking to, to prove, prove myself, looking for this validation. And I ended up joining a, a very popular fraternity, which a lot, a lot of great um, memories and awesome relationships with the guys there. But I just found myself getting in more and more situations that I never thought I would be in and with more and more shame. And deeper down this spiral, which led me to further believe that God was disappointed in me, which led me to stop going to mass. So there was uh, there was a good six month period, I'd say, when I was 18, where I, I kind of stopped going to mass and just thought I'm gonna do this my life thing on my own. Um, but that was the moment where um, I met this uh, guy, his, his name was Mike, and Mike was an SBO missionary. And Mike didn't come up to me and say, you're not going to mass, you're a terrible Catholic. <laughs> he said, hey man, um, do you, you want to go grab lunch sometime? Do you want to um, spend time together? And um, with my relationship with Mike, I really formed this friendship. And I saw in Mike, this Catholic young man, a joy and a confidence that I clearly did not (laughs) have. And I mean, respectfully, my friends in my fraternity didn't have either. And I just continued to be drawn to this, honestly, character um, of Mike. So in the spring of my freshman year, when, man, all my weekends were blurring together, and I just felt in this spiral I think at that point, I would honestly describe myself as kind of surviving or just this uh, numbing way of living. I'd say pretty like hopeless or depressed. Like I just have to get through the week and maybe something good will happen on the weekend and show up again. But Mike starts telling me about this uh, retreat that's coming up in the spring. And I'm like, well, like Mike's a good guy. And like all my weekends look the same. Anyway, so switch I'll up. give it a shot. Yeah, switch it up. And uh, so I, I go on this retreat with Florida State and the Catholic Student Union. 
And I just heard uh, the gospel for the first time in a really powerful way. And I'm sure I'd heard it before, but for some reason, God let me have open ears. And I remember being at this retreat center where everyone was so nice to me and interested in my life. And I heard that um, there's a God who made me out of love because he loves me. He gave me freedom. And I've used that freedom to turn away from him, to break that relationship. But when I did that, he didn't condemn me or abandon me, but he came after me to rescue me. And he came in the person of Jesus and he loved me so much that he died for me and rose. And if I like believe that, if I want a relationship with him, then I can be reconciled to God and I, I can be healed. And um, that spring of my freshman year on that retreat in front of the Eucharist, I can, I can still, I'm still there. Um, I had an encounter with Jesus Christ as a person and his love for me that I'll never forget. And I still return to that in my prayer to this day. Um, but the crazy thing is, oh yeah, you, you can jump in. Was that the moment when you saw the Lord fighting for you throughout your life? Yes. Um, wow. Can you speak to that a little bit? Cause I think that that's incredible. Totally. I'd say that um, when I looked at my teenage years and I looked at my college years, ev every time that I took a step away from God, he put people in my life. He put opportunities for me, for me to come back. It was kind of this like constant pursuit on his path. And the idea that he was angry at me or disappointed in me was like a total lie from the enemy. And yeah, that was, that was really powerful. So, but, um, uh, coming to a conclusion here. So you would think that like, I have this encounter and, uh, I go back and I like change my life completely, you know, but, um, yeah. man, I, I really struggled. I, um, I had met Jesus, but I was still very much in my friend group, in the world, in my habits. Yep. And I, man, if you're, if you're listening to this and you feel this way, you feel this um, duplicity in yourself, I would just say to like really have hope <laughs> and um, lean into that because God is doing something. And uh, basically, that led from my freshman spring to my sophomore spring. This. Um, okay, I'm going to mass again and then falling on my face into sin again, feeling the shame, cowering, but then God reaching out again with a friend or an invitation. Okay, yep. I'm going again, um, which led to one of the most richest um, times of my life, which would be my sophomore spring, where God finally gave me the courage to say, um, I'm done being one foot in, one foot out. I'm going to take a leap. And I'm going to go two feet in. And I remember uh, my roommates at the time who like, I love a lot. They thought I was crazy because they were like, what's going on, man? You're not going out with us tonight. You're not doing this tonight. And um, I basically just started trying to make time for prayer. Like prayer was my substitute for all the um, yep. access in my life. And really that sophomore spring was so healing because I found what I had been looking for in all the things in the world, St. Augustine, I found in the love I received in daily prayer. And it was just this gradual, greater healing and greater confidence to where God really changed my heart. So going into my junior year, like all by God's grace, like I viewed myself totally differently I had a confidence in myself, like a new love for other people. And for the first in my life, I could say no to things when I needed to and yes to things that I really wanted. And that led to a lot, a lot of awesome, happy memories at Florida State, building a community there. And ultimately, based on the freedom that I'd experienced, I was like, well, there's no question. There's multiple, there's countless men out there like me. So I'm going to, I'm going to go be a missionary. Wow. And see if I can um, 
see if I can find some freshman <laughs> Thomases, you know. <laughs> and I made the cl- like closest friends in my life in Texas as a missionary for four years. Just the joy of going out and trying trying to just be a brother to people, and it was it was so rewarding. And then we can get into this more, but then through that, just deeper and deeper, I experienced this call of God saying, you know, I do satisfy your heart and what you're looking for. Um, and here I am today. So there's a lot of, there's a lot more in between all of that. Sure. Yeah. But um, so my heart is really for those who do feel that shame, perhaps that God is disappointed with them. And especially for those who feel caught in the, the duplicit duplicit like life double mindedness kind of thing. double mindedness yeah. so there you go that's, what did that's good man <laughs> yeah um how did the lord heal your own heart through serving as a missionary oh wow that's a wonderful question um i would say that as so um typical life in the college missionary you're um you're out on campus and you are just looking to say hello to people and everyone's kind of walking by with their headphones on and not really interested but it's it's so crazy you're you're out there and instead of experiencing like a oh like these people are so rude this these kids these days get off my lawn you like experience a love for them mm-hmm. which is um like psalm 16 is one of my favorite psalms it says um you put into my heart a marvelous love for your faithful that dwell in your land and so i'd say being a missionary gave space for god to give me his heart for his people where i experience an empathy and uh, a love for, yeah, these these college kids who I, I saw a lot of myself in. And then uh, the second thing would be, if you're going to evangelize, you're going to make mistakes. <laughs> so if you are attempting to evangelize and be on mission and you feel like you keep messing up, that's like totally normal. Yeah. And it's all geared towards God teaching you how much you need him. And without him, you can do nothing. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like I'm coming out of my missionary years knowing that without God, I I suck. <laughs> <laughs> and I but when when I'm rooted in him, when I'm choosing prayer every day, like we're gonna talk about, yeah, he he does he wants to do amazing things through me and through everyone listening. So yeah. Amen, for sure. Um, what was the transition from missionary to then seminary? You want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, if you're thinking about seminary on here, it's really amazing. It's basically, a, for me, it's been a whole year of God just wanting to heal me. And God just slowing me down to have older men in my life, awesome older priests here, speak truth into my life to affirm me and also to call me higher. But um, I'd say the major tr- transition for me has been missionary lifestyle is super active. So you're in the team meetings, you're meeting up with students on campus, getting that uh, coffee, you know, <laughs> and uh, iced coffee. Iced coffee, that's right. And seminary is a lot more taking that energy and activism and pointing it towards prayer and pointing it towards um growing in intellectual knowledge but also your character which has been really good for me because the two patrons two patron saints of missionaries for the catholic church are saint francis xavier a mm-hmm. man who was very active <laughs> who was exhausted from baptizing people in yeah. uh india but the second is saint therese of Lisieux, who never left her convent. She so how is she the page saint missionaries? Because her prayer life, her intercession, 
was so effective in God's hands. So the thing that I need to believe is that me here, not on my college campus, interceding for young people could be more efficacious or more fruitful than any of my own active works, wow. which is yeah. which is insane. So anyways, yeah. there you go. No, that's awesome, man. Uh, do you want to speak to mental prayer and what that looks like for you? Because I think it's it's so sure. important in the in your own journey with the Lord. So totally, totally. Yeah. If you're if you're listening and you're kind of going in and out, this is like what I really want you to hear. So um I I've noticed and I'm sure you've noticed as well um this growing trend. I think I first started noticing it in um the Calm app. If you're familiar with the Calm app, yep. it's a it's a super popular meditation app. LeBron James uses it or um yoga or um yeah focusing on mental health or there's all these reels especially now where it's like going to going to the gym is my like my time like my restorative time and seeing that there's there's truth in all of that like it's it's so close society today is recognizing that as humans we need a place of solace we need a source of strength we need a daily place to be restored but um meditation yoga the gym is good i mean well i don't know about yoga Uh, don't quote me on that but um it doesn't go far enough like it uh it doesn't go to what we're really searching for which is another which is something outside of ourselves which is god so um when we talk about mental prayer i would be good to just like define our terms so i'd refer to mental prayer as simply time alone in conversation with god it's time in silence where we can lift our minds and our hearts to god and there's many awesome ways to pray um we have the highest form of the mass we have the rosary um you can always pray like scripture tells us to pray without ceasing but when we talk about mental prayer we're talking about a specific decision to carve out a portion of your day just to be with god so my story is that this was really taught to me when i was in college And this is crazy. This is like all God's grace. I'm not trying to um, brag or anything. But when I was thinking about it, since I've been 21 years old, every day, I've missed, I've missed a couple days, but like, never like a, like a week break, Mm -hmm. which isn't, Lord, let that make sense. Mm -hmm. Every day since I've been 21, I've spent 30 minutes of silence every day with God. And imagine if you went to the gym every day (laughs) for 30 minutes. Imagine if you tried to learn Spanish every day for 30 minutes. And imagine how much God could do in your life if you gave him that portion of time. And um, so, yeah, does that make sense? Maybe. Yeah. Oh, it does for sure. Any of that. So. And so yeah, um, during that yeah. 30 minutes, what does it look like for you? Totally. Um, so what really opened my eyes to this is a couple of spiritual readings that have been really helpful for me. So I just wanted to shout out. Um, this is it's called Time for God. Okay. Jacques Philippe. I don't know if you ever yep. heard of it. Yeah. For but sure. um, it basically emphasizes that. Um, not to get stuck in methods or routines. Like prayer is always a gift. But what that looks like for me uh, personally is in the morning, like before anything else, I get my coffee. (laughs) I get in the chapel or in my favorite chair in my room in the quiet. And I simply just try to be in God's presence and it's um, it's hard, but it's easy to describe where it's not a matter of 
thinking. It's not a matter of verbalization, but it's a matter of the heart, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like the deepest part of us just seeking to be with God. And typically what I do is I'll just take a few moments to be in his presence and ask him to be with me. I'll look at the daily readings for the day and I'll just ask the Lord, what are you speaking to me from these daily readings? Um, so like Lexio Divina? Yeah, like Lexio Divina, which is yeah. really, really helpful. And uh, journaling is super crucial during that time. But um, sometimes it's just this grace of I'll sit down, I'll say, come Holy Spirit, and uh, minute, minutes will fly. <laughs> like um, yeah. just experiencing being his presence. But then there's other times where um, like it's hard. It's so easy to get distracted. Um, I don't feel like doing it at all, but love is a choice. Just like you're not always going to feel, yeah, you're not always going to feel like it with, I don't know, your spouse or your friends or whatever, like choosing it is so powerful. And um, I guess one thing I add is it really like prayer is like a muscle, if that makes sense. So like when I first started, it was, okay, God, like 10 minutes. I'm going to set the timer and I'm just going to try to talk with you. Honestly, I'm trying to be with you. And at the start, I would barely make it like five minutes, you know, but um, just persevering little by little is so crucial. And um, especially in the seminary now, or going towards the priesthood, like a priest or seminarian who doesn't pray, who doesn't make time for prayer is like pointless. (laughs) It's like dead. Mm -hmm. I know that, um, Father Mike Schmitz, he quotes, he had a mentor who told him, like, if you're not committed to spending like an hour with the Lord every day, like you should like take a step back. Like you should really yeah. reconsider. So um, yeah, that that was that would be a few thoughts I'd have. Yeah, no, that's that's prayer, good advice so. for sure. You got a question in the chat. What advice would you give to those uh, who fake it till you make it survival state rather than thriving? Any thoughts there, Thomas? Oh wow. Yeah, I think um, honesty in the spiritual life is so amazing. And I think the fact that you have recognized this um, reality in your life of faking it till you make it is like a, a huge, a huge win. And the advice that I've always been given is to acknowledge relates to the Lord and then receive what he says. And so when I feel that way, or maybe something that I would offer is honestly speaking that uh, to God in a time of prayer, like, I don't know, maybe tomorrow you're like, okay, I've got a few minutes. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to say, Lord, you know me. And it feels like I am faking it right now. Mm. And without any censorship, Yep. Like you're talking to your best friend, just write it out and then take a few moments and see, see what he says in return. And so I, I in fact, I invite you to do that see what happens because yeah. he, he's going to speak the, the truth to you, um, which is your beloved son or daughter. So mm. yeah. let the masks fall. That's right. Let the Lord see you. Right. Amen. So, Absolutely. Yeah. What is your hope for the future of our church? Any thoughts? Wow. There? It's a loaded question, <laughs> but I ask every guest. That's a beautiful question. My hope for the future of the church. Um, I went to Seek this year, and there's a really powerful message by Monsignor Shea, and he talked about how As Catholics, we can uh, romanticize the past and have this like um, unhealthy desire for the future, if that makes sense. Like in the past, there were no problems for the church. It was the golden Mm -hmm. age. And in the future, someday we'll reach this point where everything will be great, you know, but 
the beautiful truth is like, that's not, that's not reality. And in the past, the first Christians were brutally persecuted and martyred. The heroic missionaries who evangelized Canada, shout out Canada, right? And North out. America <laughs> faced, yeah, <laughs> faced tremendous obstacles. And like now it's now it's our turn. Like God had you born, God had me born for this time. So I guess my hope would be that as a church, as Catholics, we would um, embrace like this. This is our time to witness that Jesus is Lord. This is our time to witness that God is greater than any circumstance. And um, yeah, just like right now is good. God, God is doing something good and to have a real hope. And then um, my second my second thought, as um, I'm thinking about this, is I love the real emphasis that um, Pope John Paul II, Pope Benedict XVI, and Pope Francis have really emphasized. Where there's no longer a time for merely disciples and merely missionaries, but every baptized Catholic yes. is a missionary disciple. Yep. And to recognize and own that before pointing outwards, oh, look at all these problems, to look at myself, like I could be better. I could be evangelizing. There's God has a mission for me to do. And uh, yeah, if, if together we could help every Catholic know that, um, wow, that would be really powerful. And um yeah. All of that, of course, fueled by prayer. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, going back to prayer, you actually got another question about it. Uh, can you talk about okay. balancing scripture readings and contemplation in personal prayer? Well, I can talk question. about that. Um, I would say that the advice that's always been given to me is stay where the grace is. Stay where the grace is. So let's see. Um, if I'm in my breviary yep. and I've got my scripture passage and like, for some reason, the first line I read just <laughs> wrecks me, just fears me. Like there's, there. there's no, there's no pressure to keep going. Like be patient and stay where the grace is. Yep. Um, adding on that, if um, yeah, you're taking your daily prayer time, you've got your, 30 minutes locked in. I found for me at the start, the temptation was to uh, just go crazy through scripture. I'm going to read like five chapters. <laughs> and uh, actually, it would be more rich and fruitful. Hey, maybe let's just take a small section. And like we mentioned earlier, Lectio Divina, let's go yeah. through it prayerfully a few times. And I, I guarantee there's going to be either a word or a phrase um, that's going to stick out. And then when we talk about contemplation, we know that, okay, this, this word leads me to lifting my, my mind and pondering it, meditation, which allows me to meet God there, contemplation, this union with God where you can kind of rest. So if, if, you, if you, yes, if you pray, if you have a prayer life, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sure. And uh, if you don't, yes, this, this is totally available for you. The prayer lives that we read about from the saints is like not exclusive, but God has that level of intimacy he wants with you. So, yeah. But Absolutely. great question. Oh, good advice, man. And you got, you got questions flying in. So I'm trying to keep up with everybody. Thanks oh, for okay. that dropping them in the chat but as you're talking man they're just like boom 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 so all right yeah. within seasons of desolation or not hearing the lord's voice clearly how do you tackle this or what has been helpful for you yeah then, i think oh yeah you go. yeah sorry you got more people in the in the chat being like please talk about desolation and suffering i think a lot of people are just sharing that struggle. okay yeah. yeah i would say so let's define our terms i'm sorry if you already know this Consolation is when 
you feel God, man, I can't wait to pray today. I can't wait to go to mass. I can't wait to love my neighbor. (laughs) Desolation is like, I suck. God seems so far away. The last thing I want to do is pray. I just want to scroll my phone. I don't want to go to mass. I'm comfortable in my bed. Um, if that makes sense. And then if we, if we go deeper than that, there's natural consolations and desolations. So like natural consolation, you see a sunset and you're like, that's awesome. Uh, natural desolation is like, I didn't get enough sleep last night, you know? So my, my blunt response would be a lot of desolation can be cured by fixing natural desolations. So mm. are you going to bed at a reasonable time? Are you getting up at a normal time every day? Like, are you getting enough sleep? <laughs> that makes sense. Are you eating healthy food? Are you exercising? But um, continuing to your question, it's very hard to say someone to someone in desolation, just like keep at it, you know, because I understand. So I just want to say first and foremost, like, like a real um, empathy there. And I've, I've gone through seasons of just dryness and discouragement. So you're yeah. totally not alone in that. I think what I would say is um, St. Ignatius lays out amazing principles on how to deal with desolation and his primary rule is when you're in desolation uh, remember look back and remember the times of consolation Um, god's faithfulness yes this is kind of silly but i i have a a tattoo of that on my arm yeah it's his fifth rule and it means so much to me and it says when you're in desolation Like, remember consolation and know that in the future, consolation is coming. And Mm -hmm. I'm throwing a lot at you, but there could be two two reasons for the desolation. This is rules six and seven. But the one is um, maybe the Lord is allowing this to point you towards unhealthy tendencies in, um, in your life. Um, unhealthy attachments, um, and it's it's more of like a loving pruning. But the the second is to infuse and just work in your heart, and it, it's a it's a mystery. But showing up and saying, "Lord, I trust you." In desolation, in the darkness, with that blind faith like works wonders it's it's the the secret of the spiritual life it's way above my pay grade but we read about it in saint john of the cross mother yeah. Teresa famously um in, endured this but it's an opportunity to participate in in jesus's life and his passion who feeling no warm emotions gave everything for us on the cross so that was a really long answer. <laughs> Do you no. have any more questions? Yeah, you got you got more coming in for sure. Um, but what I would just say is just to like I've definitely reached moments of of desolation and and struggle in, in my own journey. And I think don't be afraid to just cry out to the Lord and to ask those questions. Why? I don't understand. Yes. You know, just to bring it, bring be so honest with the Lord in all of it. I don't know. It's really helped me. I love that. All right. What do you do when you can't hear the Lord? And what was the most adventurous thing you did as a missionary? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Wow. I'm just like so many memories of being a missionary. Already. I believe it. Yeah, man. In my head. Because like to reach people who have very little interest in going to mass, like, but everybody loves like a good road trip or a good bonfire or good, you know, just like human things. But when you, when you can't hear the Lord, um, a couple of thoughts come to mind, uh, but the first I would just state again, I don't want to just give you a like rote answer, like be encouraged. God has not abandoned you and he is working in your life and he's doing, he's doing something. So keep, keep showing up, keep hanging in there. Yeah. Um, one thing that we can absolutely cling to is scripture is the word of God. And 
even if things are confusing, we know, like particularly the gospels, like that that is what the Lord wants to speak to you. Um, J- Jesus is like the word, like the father. Well, I'm getting, I'm getting too spacey now, but like, what does the father want to say to us is like Jesus, the image of Jesus giving everything for us and dying for us. Like that's the word of the father. So I, w- I would just say scripture is a go-to guarantee every single time you're going to open it. And that's, God speaking to you. Mm. And um, I mean, I, I love what you shared, David, just like the radical honesty, like, Lord, I don't understand what's going on, but I know yeah. you're with me. And I know, I know you will speak, you know. And also just like, I don't know, how, how can we make more space to slow down and hear him? I find when I am not hearing God, I'm I'm too busy. I'm not giving him any space to speak. Mm. I'm not, I I have not <laughs> taken my time in the morning to be with him. I've just jumped into it. I have not slowed down at the end of the day and reflected that. Okay. That would be another thing. Like at the end of the day, could you take a few moments and look back? God, wh- where were you speaking to me? And I guarantee like in a conversation with the friend in whatever it is, he's, he's there reaching out. So yeah. Do an examine at the end of the, the night. Examine. The examine, shout the examine. Let's go. Shout out to the examine for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so Love important, it. right? Just to be able to meditate and reflect on. And I find imaginative prayer. I don't know if if, mm. that, if you ventured into that a lot. Ignatian spirituality, I think, really does a lot of that. But that's been huge for me. Uh, just being able to ask the Lord, even like, Lord, would you bring me to a place that is safe for me personally? And then inviting Jesus into that. And then just allowing him to communicate his love. Like it's, it's just amazing how the Lord will speak through that. So that's beautiful. And yeah, man, I agree. Yeah, man. I love these questions. These questions are great. Dude, they're like oh, flying oh, I, it. I didn't answer the uh, most adventurous thing as a missionary one. Um, I would that's say, right. oh gosh. Glory um, stories. Come on. <laughs> so, something, something I loved, I just loved it so much is every year at the beginning of the year, we would do a hog roast where like so many um, new students would come out and I just have very precious memory of, we would, we would pull an all nighter every year and we'd smoke brisket for like 300 people. (laughs) And the like brotherhood experience there, the camaraderie, you would like take shifts with guys throughout the night. Like it was a way of us bonding. Um, yeah, that, that that'd be one thing. Also, we did go to uh, Coronado, um, the Navy SEAL base, and uh, we got to pray with the Navy SEALs. That's one I just remembered. So that's pretty yeah. cool. No, that is cool. Have you ever done like all nighter adorations before? They used to do this event where it was like all night adoration. Have you ever done that before? Like with as a missionary? Yes. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of a specific moment. Okay, I, I've got it. Uh, Holy Week, shout out Holy Week coming up. Yeah, it's is, um, We had a tradition where um, on Holy Thursday, um, all night, guys would be um, in prayer to console Jesus in the garden. Oh, wow. And, and um, every guy would sign up for Time an slot. hour. And yeah, and like, once you're done, you go wake up the next guy and everything. Nice. And, and yeah, that that um, that two a.m. slot, reading it's, the Luke account. Would you not stay awake with me for one hour? It makes yeah. it all real. So, yeah, I have so many vivid memories because I was in youth ministry for like seven years before. But just doing oh, okay. the two a, doing the two a.m. slot or the three a.m. just like looking at Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's, my prayer was like, Lord, just help me stay awake. You know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And it's good. To, it's good to know that, like, that's that's very real. And it's real life. It's real life. Yeah. Yeah, man. How did you? Uh, how were you inspired to get onto social media and start posting? I'm kind of curious about that. Yes. Um, a couple of thoughts. the The first would be, um, I've noticed it's very it's very trendy. Um, many figures. 
don't know if you're familiar. This guy, his name is Nick Bear. He's based in Texas. He basically is a what he would call a hybrid athlete. So he is a runner and like a bodybuilder. It's like you see him and you're like, what the heck? Like, that's ridiculous. But he's he's really cultivated a following in young men, particularly Mm. by just kind of like every day he shows clips of I'm running. I'm putting that work in. I'm lifting. I'm putting that work in. And I think in my head, I just had an idea of, okay, social media is where it's where we are. So that's where, where people are, where the attention is. Could it be possible to inspire that, but for prayer, <laughs> for, for yeah. like the source of the Catholic life? And um, it's been it's been really amazing. I, once again, I would say I'm totally learning. And we were talking earlier, like don't know yeah, what I'm welcome, doing welcome most of the, the club, time. Man. But um, <laughs> the interaction I've been able to have people reaching out to me and as I've been uh, posting, it's been forcing me to reflect on, do I really believe that prayer is non-negotiable? Do I really believe that I need you Jesus every day? And so that's been really fruitful. I will say, I feel like it's good to acknowledge that like social media is very addictive and I've had to, um, look at myself in the mirror and recognize that. Mm. Um, one cool thing that I'll advertise is we're totally off topic now, but no, the, uh, the iPhone has a, it's called downtime and yeah. you can get someone to put a code in. So you can. This, is, this is so great. My little sister is my like uh, accountability partner. So my phone just like stops working at 10. It goes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. it's amazing. And it, it'll boot up again at 6 a.m. The apps, at least. Yeah. So that's been amazing. So. No, yeah, it's super helpful. I mean, even just to to deal with all the notifications that that comes in through social media, just to be able to actually get a good night's sleep and not be woken up by them is. Uh, it's good right. to have boundaries, you know what I mean, with social media because it can definitely be all consuming, right? Totally. But totally I think that agree. awareness that you spoke about is. Uh, is the first step. Yeah. You know, a, key, just, a key thing I think I'm taking from away from this conversation is like, we've talked about honesty a lot, you yeah. know, being honest with ourselves and then being completely honest with God in prayer, like hold nothing back. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Well, on that note, man, I just want to thank you so much for your yes to Jesus and his church. It's been a, it's been a gift, man. And even somebody just said in the chat, uh, I've never been so interested in live content before my husband and I are listening over dinner and putting the kids to bed. God bless you. Wow. Guys. So praise the Lord for that, man. I mean, it's praise God. That's great. Yeah. It's amazing what you've been able to share about, about prayer and honesty and just thankful for your yes, man. And the content you're putting out, I mean, friends, if you are not following Thomas yet, you hit that follow button. Cause I'm sure he's got much more amazing content that's going to be coming out. So just want to yes. thank you. Thank, thank you so much for this opportunity. And yes, I would just say uh, my goal is there, there's so much uh, stimulus and information flying, especially on this app. But my hope is that every time you would see my accounts or my post, you're pointed towards the one thing that will that will give you strength, which Amen. is Jesus, which is I, I, I love the theme of just putting in the work, showing up every day. Lord, mold my heart. I don't feel like it, but I trust that if I give you this 30 minutes, this time alone with you, you're going to make me a saint. And, uh, that's like it. That's like a invincible method. So keep, keep it up, keep praying. And yeah, you're awesome, man. This is such a great concept and idea. And thank you for having me on. No, I mean, exactly what you were just saying. Made me think of our lady, the last word she echoed in scripture was do whatever he tells you right Mm. to Jesus, which is exactly what I think your, your vision is for the account, which is awesome. Uh, if people want to connect and follow, how can they how can they do that, man? Yeah, I'm really looking to just stay consistent um, with this account on Instagram. So I'd love, yeah, uh, hit the follow button, and I I will do my best if you want to um, message me or follow up um, opinions you want to offer or questions. That'd be really great. I'll do I'll do my best to respond directly 
to that. Awesome. And then I would just say, please pray for me. <laughs> pray for my vocation. Pray for my studies of philosophy. Uh, please pray for me. So yeah, thanks. Prayers definitely coming your way. But on that note, would you be willing to close us in prayer tonight? Totally. Let's do it. Awesome. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your great love for us. And we thank you for the joy and delight that you have for um, everyone who's tuned in for this conversation. And for both of us here, as we're talking, thank you that um, when you see us, when you look at us, you delight in us as your beloved sons and your beloved daughters. And we thank you, Lord, that your desire is to make us saints and to give us grace and strength every day in prayer. And so um, my, my, my ask, Lord, is that you would convict me first and foremost, but also everyone I'm listening of the amount of uh, grace, uh, support, and transformation um, you, you want to pour out, you want to so freely give when we make uh, time for prayer. Just pray for a renewal overall and a love for prayer um, around the world, specifically um, in the United States and Canada, that you would raise up the saints, that we would be those saints um, to meet the challenges of the day. And yeah, we, we also want to continue to ask for the intercession of your mother, Jesus, who gave that um, limitless yes, that perfect yes. And we ask for her intercession that um, we could give that same yes um, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the ministry, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or please leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest stories, you can follow us on Instagram at yes.catholic and visit our website, yescatholic.com. If you have benefited from Yes Catholic, please consider joining our Patreon community. Visit patreon.com slash yescatholic. I would like to thank our current patrons for your ongoing prayers, support, and contributions that have helped Yes Catholic reach thousands of souls all over the world each week. 1 Peter 3.15 says, Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. You have a story. Don't be afraid to share the good news of how Jesus Christ has moved in your life with a family member, friend, or colleague. Give Jesus your yes every single day and watch the ripple effect of the gospel. Join us next week. The journey continues right here at Yes Catholic.